Welcome back to the channel. Okay, okay, I got a little bit of explaining to do. So, we needed to remove a mailbox and we didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time digging it or doing anything crazy like that. So, we thought the best thing to do would be just to, you know, hook a toe strap to it and use some hearse pairs and pull that thing out. And guess what, it worked just fine. Okay, so we're asked, how do we add tools to our tool library for plasma cutting? So we do that up here on the left where it says design. You want to click on that, go to manufacturer. And up here on one of these tabs where it says cutting, click cutting, 2D profile, and it'll bring up this dialog box. Now with the tool section in the dialog box, which is the very first one, you'll hit select and it'll bring up this page. Over here on the left, under documents, it'll say local. And if you right click local, it'll say new library. That's where you can set up your very own library like we have for Plasma Cutter. So since we already have Plasma Cutter, we're gonna go to there. And then when, once you highlight that, it brings up this blue plus right here. Once that's highlighted, you can click on that and that's where you can add your different tools. Now we're doing cutting and we have a Plasma Cutter, so we're gonna click that. And then we're gonna do a tool for 10 gauge stainless steel we're gonna go to the holder look at that none of this applies so we don't care so this under cutter geometry kerf width this is important to us so we need to put in the curve for 10 gauge stainless steel which is 0 0.041 and our cutting data this is the second important one now this is the feed rate so 10 gauge stainless steel cuts at 90 inches a minute. So we're gonna click that to 90 inches and it changes that for all three of those. That's the cutting feed rate, the lead in feed rate and the lead out feed rate. Now we wanna make sure that this box that is clicked and it says machine uses feeds because when we post process it, the post processor will use this information to tell the machine what speeds to cut it at. So once we hit it, we'll hit accept and there it is. It's number 15, 10 gauge stainless steel. And that's it, it's that easy. Okay, so what we got going on here today in the shop is a customer kept having their mailbox broken into. Now, it didn't matter what they did or what kind of mailbox they seemed to put out there, they would come and break, someone would come and break into it. And you'll see where we took that mailbox down, that whole row of mailboxes, some of them even got stolen. Like the people just come and take the entire mailbox. So we said, yeah, we can build you a mailbox. We're gonna make it out of 10 gauge steel and it'll be pretty much bomb proof. So that's what we're doing here. We drew it up in Fusion 360 and we got a piece of 10 gauge steel on the table here and the plasma cutter is just going to work, cutting it out for us. So just a quick clean up on these pieces and we're going to get it ready to weld up. You can see here we're able to add in the customer's address and we cut it out of the steel, as you can see, and then we're gonna put a piece of aluminum back behind it. So we'll paint it the box all black and you'll see that aluminum will be nice and shiny. So it'll give it a good contrast. Here we're just getting the box all tacked up and get it ready to completely weld out.
So this design for us, it works really well. It's just pieces together. We know where everything goes, but we sell a flat pack uh, for this mailbox and it's tabbed and slotted. So it comes flat as the name suggests. And when you get it, you just line up the tabs, you put the tabs in the slots and then you can weld the whole thing up and it works really nice. This is that aluminum backer that'll go behind the numbers of the address. And like I said, it's it'll be shiny. We'll put a clear coat on it and it'll have a really nice contrast against the black box and looks really good. Here we're using our go-to all-purpose adhesive. It's a silicone adhesive, and that's what we're gonna use to adhere that to that box. Works really well. Now we didn't get it on film, but we also cut out the name of the street in aluminum, and we just simply just adhere that to the front. Here Dan's welding on the post. So this is a piece of three inch by three inch, 120 wall steel post. Back out at the crash site, we're gonna dig a new hole. Now this hole's 24 inches deep. We'll set that post in there and we'll set it down in concrete. There it is, just sitting in the hole. We got it concreted in and Dan's touching up the post with some paint. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe.